When you have seen uh, Jesus, we do ask uh, for your prayers, preaching and praying our good friends. They love to hang out with one another. And uh, as I always share, I have never graduated out of the kindergarten class of prayer. You never get too big for prayer. You never get to a point to where you are beyond the scope and uh, the need of prayer. And all of us are here today because somebody, somewhere, prayed for us. On last uh, Sunday, we uh, looked at uh, and uh, observed uh, how the Lord so uh, worked uh, with uh, Joseph and uh, how that uh, the Lord uh, spoke with him and how that there was a declaration and the birth of Christ was indeed a fulfillment of prophecy and how God is indeed a God of his word. Well, while again there were those who were celebrating the birth of Christ, there were Three wise men who were making their way, following a star uh, that led them to the Christ child. And when the wise men arrived, when, as verse 11 of chapter 2 declares, uh, when they saw the child, they bowed down and they worshipped him. And after they worshipped, uh, they presented to, to the child gifts of gold, yes, frankincense and myrrh. And uh, after they had uh, worshipped, uh, after they had given, uh, they departed. And when they departed according to our text. Uh, the Lord God himself uh, spoke to them, warned them that they should not return to Herod, uh, but uh, that they should uh, move in another direction, uh, another pathway on their way home. Well, what is unique? about the context is in verse 11 it declares that they saw the child and that word is so constructed in uh, the original that it means that when they saw the child when they saw Christ Jesus the Savior of the world they never forgot the child I think that I say that again. When they saw the child, when they saw Jesus Christ, they never forgot that encounter. I think that I say that again. When they saw Jesus, they never forgot him. And there's something about being in the presence of the Lord that changes and transforms our lives. And since they never forgot the child, I thought that it would be good for us on this last Sunday in this year 2020 for us to look at what we can expect when we have seen Jesus. You ought to look at somebody. It's all streaming. You ought to look at somebody and declare, have you seen Jesus? Because if you've seen him, there's some things that you can just expect. Well, the first thing in our text that we're going to look at, we can, if we've seen Jesus, we can expect, yes, to be on one accord. It said right there in the text that it declares that and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Now all 
of these fellows, um, they had the same dream. I think that I say that again. They had the same dream God spoke to all of them, all three wise men in a dream. And when they woke up, there was no conflict. Say amen. When they woke up, there was harmony. When they woke up, there was concord. When they woke up, no wise man number one was not disagreeing with wise man number two about what the dream declared. Wise man number three was not disagreeing with wise man two and wise man one. Listen, when they got up, there was concord. Well, what is this communicating to us? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is communicating to us that when we have seen Jesus, listen, you again will be open, have an ear open, heart open, mind open to the voice of God. It means that when we have seen Jesus, that the Lord can talk to us. Say amen. Not only can he talk to you, he can talk to me. And after the Lord has talked to all of us, in the end, there will be no conflict. There will be accord. There will be harmony. There will be concord. When we have seen the Lord, the scriptures declare that God is not a God of confusion. Amen. So when we've seen him, and this is so important in order for the church to move from 2020 into 2021, it's important for us, yes, if we see, look at somebody and ask them, have you seen Jesus? Well, if you've seen the Lord, then the Lord ought to be able to talk to you. And not only can he talk to you, when the Lord you will listen. Amen. Amen. So the Lord spoke to all three fellows. Yes. And after he spoke to all three of them, there was concord. All were on one accord. <laughs> there was no conflict. And when the Lord, yes, when we've seen the Lord, then when he speaks, and when he speaks within our fellowship, there will be concord. Amen. Amen. If you've seen Jesus, say amen. I've seen him. I've seen the Lord work. I've seen him. Yes, miracle after miracle. I know that the Lord is real. Say amen. How many of you know that the Lord is real? <laughs> He can bring concord out of conflict when you keep an ear open to hear his voice. And when you sing him every day, you just don't mind having a little talk with Jesus. But the songwriter declared that every day, yeah, you can talk. When you've had a little talk with Jesus, he'll make what? He'll make everything. Say it, say it. He'll make everything all right. No matter what it is, he'll make everything all right. And so, uh, when, when you have seen Jesus, what can you expect? You can expect that, uh, for there to be, yes, yeah, some concord. For everyone to be on one accord. For there to be harmony. Uh, then, then secondly, you, you can expect, uh, yes, you can expect to be disconnected. It's right there in the text. You, you, you can expect, yes, to be to be on one accord, and you can expect to, uh, to be disconnected. The Lord warned the wise men, right. warned them in a dream that they should not uh, uh, return to him, right. that, that they should not return to him. You can expect for that to be a, a, a disconnect. Someone said, well, disconnected from what? Well, well, it's not the what, but it's disconnected from the who. It's not the what, it's from the who. Say man, in our text, don't return to Herod. Somebody declared why? Because Herod means you no good. And so don't, don't, don't return to 
him. Why? Because, because he wants to use you for the purpose of implementing now, not a holy plan, but he wants to use you to implement his unholy plan. Well, what is this communicating to us? Well, it is communicating to us that when we have seen the Lord, then the Lord will help you to see those who mean you no good. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he'll help you to see those who will try to destroy your witness. He will, he will help you to see. When you see the Lord, he'll give you some discernment to, to see those who will try to pull you away from your worship. Yes, but almighty God, when you see the Lord, when you look at others through the eyes of Christ, he will help you to see for Amen. For who, who mean you no good. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says you need to put on the mind of Christ. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He'll try. Yeah, when you see him, he'll help you to see those who will try to convince you that, that, that God's standard is really not the standard at all. No, God's standard is the standard. I don't care what they still want to commercial. I don't care what they're saying in the marketplace. I don't care what popular opinion. I don't care about it. All that matters is the word of God. Amen. And, and God's standard. I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on something. Amen. 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 With the Lord on my side, I, I got somebody with me. Amen. Amen. Who can handle any circumstance? Amen. 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 I, I, hear, I hear somebody saying, "Well, well, well, well Pastor, what, what about the, the, the folk that that you just see every day? Folk that you can disconnect yourself. <laughs> folk, folk that I work with, I can't disconnect that." Listen, when you see the Lord, the, the Lord can, can help you, yes, to, to see what they need. Say amen. You see, there may be those I work with, maybe those who are close to me. I cannot disconnect myself because I see them every day. But the Lord, yes, when, when I've seen him, he can help me to see beyond them and to see what they need. Yeah, they need my presence. They need my light. They, they need me. The Lord can help me, yes, to give me what I need so that I won't respond to those that I see every day in a negative way. Say amen. So that my light can shine. So that they will not and no longer be able to push my button. Make me react the way that they want me to react. But the more me, the more I bless them, the more they look down their nose at me and where yes, their necks, yeah, the more I get down on my knees and I pray for them, because the Lord helps me to look beyond them. Isn't that what the Lord did with us? Did he look beyond our faults, our failures, our weaknesses, our habits, and minister unto us? Yeah, well, even though that we see daily, that can be a disconnect. Amen. Because the Lord can disconnect me from the way that I used to respond. Amen. 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 When I've seen Jesus, you look at somebody and say, have you seen him? You see, when you see him, it makes a difference in your life. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I can just shout right there because when I think about Jesus being a difference maker, yes. it brings joy to my yes. heart. Yes. When I, I think about, uh, yes, the way I used to be and, and where, where, where I am now, the way that I am now, it brings joy to my heart because he has disconnected me from some stuff. Yes. And I'm no longer, you ought to point your finger up to glory. If you're straight, you ought to point your finger up to glory. If you're here, you ought to point your finger up to glory. Tell the Lord, thank you that I'm not what I 
used to be, there's been a disconnect. Amen. Amen. So, so when you've seen the Jesus, you can expect for there to be a, 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 a disconnect. You, you expect to be disconnected. Amen. Amen. I, I'm able to see folk now who mean me. Yeah, they're, they're no good. Say, man, they're trying to use me. Amen. Yeah. There's a folk like that. When the last time you seen? <laughs> Somebody said yesterday. I saw yesterday. There's a folk like that. Amen. But, but the Lord, the Lord can help us to see beyond. Amen. 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 Well, this last last Sunday in, in, in this year and I, I didn't want to I didn't want to hold you too long but there's, but there's one more point say it <laughs> when, when you've seen the Lord you can expect to yeah to be on one accord you can, you can expect to be you can expect when you've seen the Lord that you can expect to yes uh, to be disconnected. Then when you have seen the Lord lastly, you can expect to, uh, to be redirected. <laughs> Say man. You can expect to be on one accord. You can expect to be disconnected from folk who mean you no good and who try to use you. Then you can expect to be reconnected. It's right there in the text that when the wise men left, uh, when they departed from the Christ, uh, child, after they had worshipped, after they had given their gifts, the Lord spoke to them in a dream, don't, don't return to Herod because he doesn't mean you any good. And, and then it declares that the Lord, yes, uh, uh, he showed them another way home. Right. Amen. They, they were re <laughs> they were redirected. Now, there, there are some things that the much that I could say about how the Lord redirects us. Much that I could say, but but there's some things that, that I do want to say. When the Lord has a redirected way for our lives is the best way. Amen. Say amen. amen. The, the Lord's a redirected way for us is not only is it the best way but it's the better way you see right, right there should be some shots right there the Lord, the Lord's redirected way for us for our lives we've discovered that it's the best way so, do you see that folk? you know when I've seen the Lord the Lord's way becomes the best way when I've seen the Lord the Lord's way becomes the better way that what, what I would wear, you know, this is the way I see it. No, that doesn't matter anymore. It's all about the, the Lord's way. I wouldn't let them do me like this. No, no, the Lord's way is the best way. It's the better way. I'm going to let them be all in my face like that. No, the Lord's way is the best way. It's always the better way. Say that. And the laws redirected way should have been some shocking right there. It, it is a, yeah, it's the beneficial way. Yeah, it, yeah I, I tried him. How many of you have tried Jesus? How, how many have tried? No, I'm not talking about just coming to church. How many have you tried Jesus? I'm not talking about just saying in the choir. How many of you have tried Jesus? I'm not talking about just us. I'm talking about how many of you have tried Jesus? I'm not talking about just preaching. How many of you have tried Jesus for yourself? The Lord declares in his word.
is the best way. Amen. It's the better way. It's the, it's the beneficial way. The larger way is the bona fide way. Say amen. It's the bona fide. It's for real. I know Jesus is real. I know the Lord will work in your life. I know the Lord yeah, can pick you up, turn your life. It's just not jargon. I know from personal experience. I've been down in the ditches in life. I've been in between a rock and a hard. And I cried out to the Lord. Somebody in here, you went between a rock and a hard place. And that's why you ought to thank the Lord right now. If the Lord has delivered you, somebody say, Well, why are you still shouting? Yeah, because the Lord delivered me in 2000, in 1980. And I'm still rejoicing in 2020. Why you all got that smile on your face? Why you always preaching like that? Right away. Yeah, his way is the blessed way. Yeah. 
And it leads you to a place called Calvary. I'm reminded of uh, Paul the writer who declared that well, uh, woe be unto us if we don't preach uh, the cross. Woe be unto us if we do not declare Jesus, uh, yes, hanging on Calvary. Jesus being taken down and buried. And Jesus, uh, yes, being raised on the first day of the week. Listen, there's something about this uh, blessed way. When I'm down, the Lord points uh, my attention to a hill called uh, Calvary. And it is at Calvary where I found the Lord. It was at Calvary where all, uh, yes, of my burdens uh, they rolled away. Amen. It was at Calvary where I saw a man by the name of Jesus who, yes, took that old rugged cross of God, got the hill. And when he got on that hill, he allowed sinful men to nail his hands. And he allowed sinful men to nail his feet. And the Lord never said a complaining word. Listen, if Jesus could be nailed to the cross and if he never complained, what about us? If the Lord could be, yes, have his hands and his feet and a spear, yes, just thrust in his side while he hung there and if he never complained then what about us I want you to know that when complaint begins to settle into your spirit I dare you to lift your eyes up to a hill called Calvary and it will take every complaint out of your spirit every complaint out of disposition and you look at a savior who died in our place it will bring joy to your spirit and it will put praise down in your spirit and somebody said well when praises go up anybody got any praise on the last Sunday in this year when praises go up on Oh, God. 